Ask people what they know about Birkenhead Park, and they will say... So what can you tell me about Birkenhead Park? Isn't it the first park in the world? Birkenhead Park is not the world's first park. That's in Mongolia. The oldest public park in Britain is the Derby Arboretum. That opened four years before Birkenhead. But it does depend on what you define as a public park. Birkenhead is the first publicly funded park. So for sake of argument, we will say that Birkenhead is the first. The first public park. So Derby can go and forget about it and glory in what they already have. So what else do people say about Birkenhead Park? Hello, is that New York? Did you know that Central Park was based on Birkenhead Park? Hey, you guys! Are you trying to tell me that Central Park is based on Birkenhead Park? Ah, forget about it! But this is not disputed, and the park was the template for Central Park in New York. Actually, Derby claims this as well. However, recently, a man from New York came over to prove it. What really I think struck him the greatest was the, the, the democracy of the park. And it was completely open and people of every class was using it and it was free. So what does the park have to offer? Let's go and take a look. Wait, if I can teleport, why didn't it just teleport all the way there? So is this road the longest road that surrounds any park? No. It's not the longest road surrounding a park, but you can find the longest promenade in the entire country in this link just up here. A park in a town or city is a place for peace and tranquility, from the hustle and sometimes problematic areas that surround it. Unfortunately, sometimes the outside spills in. Inside the park is mainly grass, trees and water, but there are some extras put in to enlighten the minds of the locals. <laughs> Tennis courts, so when Wimbledon is on, people can come here and pretend that they're good at it and play all year round. A playground just for the summer holidays. Bowling greens for the under 50s. Football pitches for playing football. Two cricket pitches, here is one of them, and there's a dog on the pitch. And two fishing lakes to keep people occupied between 9 and 5, Monday to Friday, when the weather is nice. The park is divided by Ashfield Road. During the war, the gates were taken for salvage. In today's language, they were stolen and taken to the scrappy and weighed in. Also during the war, this field contained anti-aircraft guns and spotlights, also called super troopers. Super trooper beams are gonna blind me. Oh, and the park opened on Easter Monday, 1847. Lewis Hornblower designed the grand entrance, its three arches flanked by lodges. Being a Grade 2 listed building, this means it can't be altered or demolished, unless someone in authority can make money from it. Did we mention the Swiss Bridge? The Swiss Bridge. And the Roman Boathouse? The Boathouse. Park runs that happen nationally also happen here in Birkenhead Park. Here is Head Wynn, or the Black Chair, recently reopened by Hugh Edwards. But to think about the sacrifice of so many in conflict, including, of course, the Great War, when Heath Wynn and so many others lost their lives. The Liverpool City Region Mayor, whatever that means, was also taking an excursion from the frantic Liverpool to the Pleasant Peninsula. For those who were uh, English, I'd be told with my Scouse accent I can't speak English, so... <laughs> the Birkenhead Park Rugby Club has hosted some of the world's best. Once being in England's rugby's top flight, the park has also hosted the New Zealand All Blacks, most recently in 1978. The club also holds the title Football Club. They play football, not soccer. If I hear you shouting for anything again, I'm going to be penalising you. This is not soccer. Is that clear? being formed at a time that rugby football was its correct name. Some would still argue it is. To this day, the club's name is Birkenhead Park Football Club. And all of this in the middle of Birkenhead. Give me your microphone. Hi.